Okay, uh, welcome to the planning board meeting for Monday, the 11th of April, 2016. I'd like to start by thanking HCAM for taping the uh, uh, meeting. We're down to uh, just a quorum today, so there'll be a bunch of people watching it. So hi to all the planning board members, and hi to our devoted groupies that are out there watching this wonderful meeting today. Um, let's see, schedule for today, we've got several public hearings. We have a hearing on a proposed zoning um, bylaw amendment. We have a public hearing for 110 um, Pond Street, which is a scenic road public hearing. We're continuing the public hearing on Haynes Farm. And we also have uh, continuance on the Legacy Farms uh, public hearings. And we've got a couple other interesting things in our uh, just general stuff that we talk about. Uh, I've been told that I should plug the sidewalk survey. If you go to the town website, uh, the planning board is sponsoring a where, do, where, do we shoot, where should we put the next sidewalks in town? And we've gotten several responses already to the uh, response uh, survey. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing from a lot more folks and uh, planning board members. You know, you're allowed to submit uh, responses in too. Uh, one of the things that I think might be important to do is to identify small areas where maybe a sidewalk is missing in front of somebody's house that would connect a whole bunch <coughs> together. Maybe we pick up uh, a bunch of those pieces, as well as some of the, I'll say, big picture, you know, should we continue on Wood Street all the way down to uh, Woodville? Uh, should we continue going west on West Main Street? Uh, you know, what what does people think for sidewalk connect connectivity uh, for that? So. Having said that, I think that's it for my early announcements, and we'll open the public hearing, which is a, for a proposed amendment to zoning bylaw. Um, this is to allow cultural uses in the Oswood, Osmood um, residential sub-district. Uh, for folks that are out there in TV land, basically, uh, Planning Board is sponsoring this article at the town meeting. Uh, we, one of the potential uses for the agricultural, or not the agricultural, the athletic parcel is to put in a uh, international uh, marathon center. And right now that's not prohibited in, or it's prohibited in that zone. So we would uh, change the uh, uh, zoning to allow that use in, in that parcel and other parcels, I guess, in, in, in Osmond. So, uh, anyway, that's what the hearing's all about. Uh, anyone here that wants to speak to that? Roy, do you want to? Um, I would say that uh, on behalf of Legacy Farms, we would fully endorse this idea. We think it would be a wonderful addition to Hopkinton to have the Marathon Center on this site. Frankly, anywhere in Hopkinton would be wonderful. Although I think the fact that this site is so directly almost near the beginning of the, the marathon route would better location. So we would highly endorse the idea. Mr. Kildoff, are you uh, hiding in the back or do you want to say, do you want to say, do you have anything you sure. want to show us? Sure. Let me, I'd be happy to share with you what one of the options might look like we were to move forward with an idea like this. This is the uh, this is the parcel that we're we're looking at and thinking about. This uh, property over here is owned by uh, Mr. Spangler. This is 135. Um, they're there's lots of flexibility and options here. The thing that's, that's really exciting as far as I'm concerned is the potential of this property connecting to the trail system that's back up in this particular area. 
So the hope would be to, to uh, this, this facility, which is probably 20,000 square feet, um, could be positioned uh, right here. The idea would be to enhance this water feature, not try to shrink it. Um, that's, that can be a pretty beautiful asset. You can see some of the trails, how they connect. This, this particular pond in the back has serious potential for uh, not just in terms of beauty, but also potential use athletically. So we don't, if the International Marathon Center were, were to go here, we don't want to limit the potential use of this property for athletic purposes. You can see there's a field, and re you remember when the hockey rink was talking about going in there, they were talking about placing some fields there. But the exciting part is the connectivity to, uh, to other areas. This uh, is on the Spangler property, and we're, we're very much interested in it because they used to quarry uh, granite out of that particular area. I don't know if any of you have been back there, but there's a, a very, na well, it's not natural now because it's been quarried, but there's sort of a three-sided area that would, uh, would make a, a beautiful, uh, quiet uh, area, con contemplative area that uh, we might use to recognize some of the things that happened in uh, 2013. So that's roughly the, the, one of the possibilities. I think with this possibility is the, uh, the International Marathon Center folks would be buying the back end of the Spangler property and kind of combining the, the uses for that. Oh, got it. Kind of, yeah. And then, but it puts the, the building front and, uh, front and center on right on the, on the route. So yeah. that's why this zoning needs to be done. You know, we had, when we were looking at the... Uh, The hockey rink, yeah. it was just a road, and then they were kind of located off on the side, and, you know, that's kind of a nice open space, it is. Uh, wooded area there, and it's, the terrain is not as conducive to building as the flat. Here? Yeah, right. It's, yeah, it's pretty tough. Take it's, a lot of work. It's, 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 it's a lot more work. I was so. going to say, what is the, how does the topography look, Tim, coming off of 135? Or is it pretty flat or undulating a little right here? bit? Yeah. It's all flat. flat. It's a direct flat, shot right in. And then it yeah. kind of... Yeah. It's really at, at the pipeline kind of goes up through that one side, and then from there on, it you know it's pretty rough, rough stuff. And how large is that athletic parcel behind it, approximately? That's a soccer field. Soccer field. It's in there. Mm -hmm. Baseball field. But. My <laughs> 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 mistake. I missed miss that one. <laughs> yep. yep. That's, I, I'm, I'm out. I think this is great. Okay. Uh, did anyone else have any uh, comments? Yeah, Frank. Um, I want to thank Mr. Kildoff. You always bring uh, exciting ideas with a respectful uh, approach to the through the town. You incorporate history and, and current events and activities, and um, everyone everything everything's very inclusive. I, I like that. I especially like your idea about the uh, quarry area, um, and I'm excited about the pond area, which I'm th were you hinting at uh, ice hockey or ice skating? It has that possibility. That's that's a that's a that pond is wide open. And it's not that deep, so excellent ice skating. Plan. The other thing you did, your board did, is uh, this particular area. You remember the solar farm? Mm -hmm. You uh, arranged to have that fencing go around that, so the the visual impact here will include that pond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any uh, other members of the po Oh, John? How would the, um, would it be a lease of the land, that portion of the land? I think, you know, you know we have to work that out. I, 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 I could say yes or no, and I think that either one would be a mistake. Okay. But there, there would have to be some arrangements. That's why we're looking at this property as well. Yes. Uh, the, the easiest way to do this is to do a land swap. But, you know, when we raise... $20 million, all that becomes becomes easy. Okay. okay anyone and else? by the way, we're not looking for we're not looking for public money here. This is this is this is not taxpayer dollars. Okay. Seeing no other comments, um, I think I'd entertain them. Any further discussion at all? I think I'm good. Okay. I think I'm all for it. Okay. Um, Entertain a motion to uh, endorse this at the town meeting or recommend it to town meeting for passage. 
So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Okay, so Thank we're you we're Thank you. We're, we're actually a couple minutes ahead of time, we'll which see is town meeting. Yeah, okay. Maybe before. Yeah. Okay, I'd like to to consider two items here. Um, and this is to whether the board will uh, the first one on the business to be conducted at the board at any time. Consider voting to recommend the town meeting warrant items, which were on page <coughs> oh, 16 of of uh, Jennifer's mem memo. Now we can we can do this real easy, or we can do this one at a time. Uh, are there any ones of these that members on the board would not, would like to keep separate to to discuss? And maybe somebody might not vote yes on it. I think, you know, we've talked about it, we've recommended the language, whatever. I thought we were in pretty good. Let's, let's talk, I'm sorry, let's, let's talk about 40, uh, J, the easement, uh, as separate. And Elaine, did you get Hilltop land? Uh, it looks as though the association will not be ready to go so, okay, so let's take J and L out of the, the list. So basically, we're, we're talking about voting on everything but J and L. Um, motion to recommend all those articles to town meeting would be in order. I move uh, to recommend um, articles 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 7, 38, 39, 40, 44, 47, 48, 49 to town meeting. Is there a second? So moved. Second. Okay. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Uh, Let's let's leave 42 and 45 to our next meeting, Jennifer. We'll, we'll put that on, on, on the agenda. Uh, if something can happen in that time, I think we're getting pretty short on 42 on time. So, Elaine, do you have an update on basically 42? The survey is still on vacation. So we... Okay, so... You know, we're we're a month away from town meeting. I just don't think we're going to get there. You're right, which is a little disappointing. But can we talk about the process? Uh, this is Article 42. You just were talking about. Correct. We have to wait for the. Is it? It's not a town surveyor. It's a private surveyor. Mm -hmm. um, can we not use another surveyor? Or is that? Uh, we could, that but we've only got a couple of weeks. <laughs> we can still proceed with the design. Why don't we just hire a, another surveyor? I, I know of, in my hometown, uh, for my friend's, comp friend's family company, a surveying company. Um, <coughs> I know they can turn around and they're a larger company, but they can throw people at projects when they're needed. Can't we just get a larger company in our area to, to do that? It's possible. We did get a call from Beta, but it was, it was a lot of money. More than the current guys on vacation. Um, if we want to put it out to rebid, how long would that process take? Well, it's just a matter of calling someone and getting a quote. So we can call around. The problem is the time frame. Um, Which we'll, we'll still pursue that. Thank you. Let's let's take no action tonight on those two. If, if a miracle comes through and we can have something for town meeting, because you know that puts us almost a year behind if we can't do something, and I hope we could. Did you vote on Article Forty Six? 
I know I didn't include that one. That's that one? The, the gift of uh, the Legacy Farms Recreation Parcel to accept it uh, for municipal purposes rather than open space. So at the last day of the town meeting, the town voted to accept it for open space and recreation purposes. And this revote would be accepted for general municipal purposes so you can have it for an international marathon. Center. Oh, this is, this is for the athletic parcel, right. not the... Yeah. The athletic parcel. Okay. Um, they entertain a motion to support Article 46. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. I'm sorry, just, can we go back for one second for Article 42? What's the window that we need the land surveyed so we can move ahead with the design? We can move ahead with the design and survey. Well, we've got two things. One is we need to show the property owner and negotiate with them that they're willing to give or sell at a very low price uh, the easement that we would like. And the motion has to refer to that plan. And yeah. So, so the question is as to whether or not we can get all that done, including meeting with them in the next month. So it's going to be it's going to be tight. So now, you know, Elaine, we could we could we could start up negotiations with just a pencil sketch of what it is. Maybe we ought to maybe we ought to do that first and, and try to get things done in parallel. And if they are in the right mood with what we're planning on doing, then we'll tell them we're going to put put together a plan for town meeting real quick. Let's 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 try that approach. And it helps if it's a surveyed piece of paper as Okay. Thank you. Since it is just the easement and not a final design, we can always make the pavement come within what we need there, I think. It's just a taper. Yes, it's just a taper. Okay. I see we're we're now running a little bit behind. So let's open the public hearing for 110 Pond Street, which is a scenic road application, which is to repair various sections of stone wall and continue and restore the existing section for about 150 feet. And do we have an applicant? Come on down. Sure. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Chuck Holden. I'm the owner of 110 Pond Street. Uh, the, the goal would be just to extend the stone wall that was pre-existing and likely torn down at one point in time. I do have pictures if anybody hasn't seen the process. Question for Elaine and Jennifer. Since you're not removing any stone wall, is it is it is it is a is this triggered by adding to it? Yeah. Oh, alteration. Okay, so that's how it goes in there. I was. I guess is, when I, I guess when I pull a rock out of my garden and I put it on my stone wall, I guess I'm violating the rules. But uh, I always thought that's what the farmers did to it. I think you're right. Okay. So, but isn't he just trying to rebuild the wall that was there already existing? Yeah. There are sections that are essentially empty. So yeah. what I think happened was there was a full stone wall at one time, and they may have pulled off stones to build walls elsewhere on the property. Um, so, so my goal is, and I understood that I couldn't really touch the stone wall to complete it or fix it without approval. So that's why I'm here. And is the goal to restore it essentially to its original... It, the goal is to keep the look and feel as to the original form of the old portion. So my goal would be either to find the similar field stones to build the wall yeah. mm -hmm. or to just, you know, distress it with milk and those type to make it grow the same type of moss, if you will, and, and keep the same look and feel. I, 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 as long as the, I think the importance is the look and feel aspect of it. Right. <coughs> I mean, because... You don't want to use a lot of, I'll say, split rock as opposed right. to more rounded. Though I did notice a, a lot of some split rock in the existing wall too. 
so it's kind of a blend. Yeah, but yeah. but you know you do, I don't think I don't think you want like a straight wall. You want a, a an old farm I want wall. A rough wall. Rough that's, wall. That's my goal. Um, if you if you saw the old wall, it's pretty rough. So my goal is to keep it looking rough. Um, there may be opportunity to use right now. There's a lot of stone on my property because I've done a lot of work and took a lot of stone out. So the goal would maybe be to on the underlying, put some of the rock that's broken up, but then sure. on the top to put the rounded field stones to match the look and feel. Sure. If you're burying the stone, it doesn't really matter to right. me, or us, I don't think. Let's see. Do you guys have any recommendation on condition? Uh, something, a condition like the look and feel will be maintained or something like that? To match the existing Do you have a picture of the existing wall? Uh, we didn't get Can you send a picture to Jennifer? Sure. I've got them on my camera too. Oh, okay. I took some over the weekend. So, with that condition, oh, is there any public comments? Kenny Carlson, yep. 111 Pond Street. I'm uh, I'm in favor of this. I've seen the Chuck and his wife are doing a great job across the street, and. Uh, my only problem is that his wall is going to look a lot better than the one <laughs> across the street. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're going to go down the street and fix all those, right? But I'm I'm totally in favor of it. Well, maybe I'll have some extra rock for you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> I have plenty of rock over there. Yeah. John Patino, yeah. David Joseph. I just drove by it and looked at it uh, about an hour and a half ago, and yeah, my goodness, it's. So so this is, I think you guys already took enough time. This is, this is, doing a great job. Well, anyone that's even doing their house with their own rock truck, I, I guess I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I entertain a motion to, uh, no further public comment? Okay. I entertain a motion to approve the alteration of the stone wall at 110 Pond Street with the condition that the look and feel of the existing wall be maintained with the, the new area. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. You're all set. Good luck. Move to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Aye. Moved and seconded. We close the public hearing. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Good night. Okay. We're doing pretty good today. Okay. Oh, we're already uh, picked up a couple more minutes. That's always good. Um, let's uh, use these six minutes to our advantage. Um, we have a bunch of documents that we received in response to our quote for the uh, review of our engineering consultant. And we have three sets. Elaine's got a set, Jennifer's got a set, and this untouched set is sitting right here. <laughs> I have asked Jennifer to kind of put together a cost summary of what's in the, in these proposals. Uh, I think we need to evaluate those on, in three areas. One is the cost, even though we don't pay it, our applicants do pay it, and that, that is of concern to, I think, everyone on the board. The second is, I think we might want to evaluate the size of the firm. There's some firms that are small and they don't have all the resources in there. I, I know we looked at that when we hired Beta the last time around. Mm -hmm. And kind of along with that is also a, kind of an experience factor. And I'll say the experience factor is, you know, we've Beta is somebody we know. We know the new name of whatever fs and is that's in this pile. Well, since he has a new name now. They have a new name, I think. And so... Uh, it's already three years. It's already three years, John. So, anyway, it's, uh, it's something for us to look at and want to know if there are other members of the board that would like to be on a 
recommendation committee. There's we got John, we got him volunteer. Uh, anyone else want to read through all this stuff? And maybe okay. And and the people that don't have their their uh, master plan section done are, are excused from this duty. So <laughs> so <laughs> I guess I guess we'll let the master plan. I guess we'll let uh, John and myself look Thanks. look through here, and Jennifer and Elaine. So, you know, we'll kind of come to kind of consensus in one of our next meetings. Uh, when what do we when do we want to let this contract? We want to some time to interview. Oh, you were, if 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 it's clear that we want to interview the top three, we'll invite them in. But you know that usually takes a good twenty minutes. Each, each. Okay. So it's it's a it's a it's a fairly big commitment out of our time. So uh, we'll have to see whether we're at that. Uh, One question, Mr. Chairman: yeah. Those three factors you talked about, cost, size, and experience factor, are they weighted equally as you go through the analysis? Or I don't know. I think that's kind of what the board's got to really decide. Because okay. I suspe I suspect that there's difference on each one of these. Yeah. Uh, if I remember the experience from three years ago, it, it, there was like two or three that kind of came to the top. And there's some balance in there, obviously. There's some but balance. Then, then it comes down to you know, if, you know, if, if the, you know, one of the simple things, a, a board member is pretty happy with where they're, what they've been getting from the beta group at this point. You know, if, if as long as their cost is not out of line, I haven't, I literally have not opened them up, so I don't know. You know, if if you know, they're on the low end of the I cost. End, yeah. You know, we we know them. It's a known, it's a known uh, thing. Unless, you know, we knew them and we didn't like it. You know, but I'm not sure that's their condition. John. Yeah, I remember the, we're we, uh, we're concerned about bait and switch. Yep. And we want to make sure that we got uh, got what we paid for. We paid for a senior engineer. We want to make sure we got a senior engineer. Yep. So, vice versa. And right. we'll we'll see who they're committing to too, because they've had some personnel changes recently. I have a couple questions. Yeah. Well, a statement um, and a question. When I was on the um, conservation commission, we you know, we hired the company they're using now. Um, I don't think they passed some packets like that, so that's good. It's more maybe more organized. Uh, and then they came and they did their pitches and they were like 20 minutes each or so and um, we had the final two do that. Um, so my question is, will this information be available electronically for us or is it just uh, hard copies? I will be scanning them. They have not scanned yet, but they will be. Um, well, don't, do, don't worry if that's a lot of extra manual. We have to, we'll have to do that anyway. Okay. That so we, you know, I guess the goal for the four of us is to put together a subset of this for the board and maybe come up with questions and comments and try to structure it so that we get to it efficiently. If I might, might add, yeah. if it's not too late, can we ask the people who are applying for this work to submit electronic copies, because they must have electronic copies in 2016 if they put these together and then they print them out and they mail them in, they must have electronic copies as well, <coughs> and then they would save you a lot of time, or your department. Right, that's a pretty good idea. That's a great <laughs> idea. That's a great idea. That's right, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got for time here. I think it's pretty close to 8 o'clock. We'll be by the time I get done sorting this out. Okay. As we discussed last meeting, we're going to start with the Hen Farm, which is 25 <coughs> Ash Street. And we've got the legacy people standing by that if we finish, you know, we didn't want to put them at 9. So basically, we double book this. And uh, so. I'd like to uh, reopen the public hearing for the, uh, first of all, we're short 
a couple of members today, but I think we still have plenty <coughs> of voters. Just Claire. Just Claire. Mm -hmm. We're short just one, so it's. And I assume you want to go forward well, there today. There were a couple of members who weren't here last time. Me. Okay. So they need to watch the last meeting. Got it. If they want to. Okay. If we're going to get to that point. Okay, I'm, I don't think we're going to get to a vote today. And I haven't watched it yet. Okay. So, so I could be I could be surprised, but yeah, I don't think we're. Brian Carp. Yeah. Okay. So you guys got some homework. Okay. So reopen the public hearing on Haynes Farm the Summit Realty Trust proposed three lot subdivision at 25 Ash Street. Come on down. Okay. There was two two outstanding issues, if I remember it correctly. One was how we're going to deal with the neighbors to the north, and the second one was the drainage pond area. Uh, let's let's take the to the elephant in the room with the, okay. the, the neighbors in the, to the north. So, wh uh, what's the progress? All right, well, what I did is I went out and I sought counsel for just so I could uh, wrap my head around what needed to be done. Um, unfortunately, my counsel could not be here this evening. Uh, what we did was offer um, <clears throat> a way to access the property so I could continue with my plan as is. And uh, we heard back recently that uh, uh, they don't like the offer that was made to them. You know, although we were told they want access, we provided access, but apparently that's not good enough, so um, according to their attorneys. So what I'd like to do is just continue moving forward. <clears throat> I know some board members went out, walked the land, and looked at uh, you know what we propose to do. So I'd like to uh, get some feedback on that. Okay, well, let's let's continue to talk on the access aspect for it. Yep. When I saw. The 40 feet, that was a little bit less than what I was expecting to come see through there. I, you know, that was, I mean, I can see where you're, you're coming from on that, but basically that doesn't provide them any frontage, and I think that's the key to their, as, as I read the letter, it's, the, without the frontage, it, the, the access doesn't I was it. I was told that they only needed access to put one household back and I heard for a retirement house down the road how but much frontage do you need? You need to, well, <coughs> it's in zone, to, you, you mean, need a hundred feet as a minimum to, if, if it's in the residence A area. Well, I guess the expectation on this side of the table was that um, a subdivision road would have to be created uh, over the Camparellas property to come up with the frontage and area necessary for um, a building lot of some shape that uh, they would, um, on their side, design. Uh, so we have provided access over that parcel to their land, which would allow them to then develop this cul-de-sac scenario and then come back to the board uh, would, whichever boards in town they need to see to discuss the merits of their proposal, but we have alleviated that concern about barring access to their property. That strip that they saw as an impediment to development has now gone away. You folks can decide the merit of the proposals or whichever group in town. Again, um, I don't can, know their can property. Can you spread the plans out again? For sure. <coughs> Is that 
40 feet access toward the front toward Ash Street, or is it farther back? Maybe it show, maybe it'll show up here. So again, here is Ash Street. Here's yep. the existing 25. Here is the existing Camberellis home. So we have our roadway. We've asked you to weigh the construction standards down to the 12 foot wide width. So we're anticipating somewhere in here giving them access to their property so they can come up with some design scenario for uh, the development of their parcel for what has been stated to be one home in the rear. So that strip, which they feel is blocking access to their property, um, will now have a way to cross it to get into their land, which I had heard was the issue um, that they had taken with this original design. Good. These are, excuse me, these are houses, Dave Paul, 7 Maryland Drive. Pardon me? These, these are houses? Oh, these are proposed. Uh, this, is this, the existing the, uh, this is the existing home here. No, the driveway is here. Why is it they're so wide and big? You are, sir? Dave Paul, 7 Maryland yeah. Drive. This is the access way to the home. That is a 24 foot wide driveway to access a 24 foot wide garage. Okay. You guys want to comment on this? Um, sure. Go ahead. <clears throat> Hello again, Michael Fee, Pearson Mandel, representing Diane and um, uh, Daniel Caprellis. Sorry. Askins. Sorry. Um, the uh, disconnect, I guess, in this discussion is that. Um, the future plans that have not yet really been formulated on behalf of my clients uh, would involve two lots. Um, and so you're, you correctly state that what is important to us is access and frontage. Um, we believe that the regulations don't allow the buffer strip and that um, because this development is in essence creating a corner lot of our lot, um, that we should be allowed uh, to gain both frontage and access. Um, from the road. Um, we're, we're not advocating that the road should be built, built out to full specifications. I don't think that's necessary or warranted. Um, but we do believe that the regulations uh, would enable us to utilize this road at some point in the future uh, for a uh, subdivision that's approved um, either by A&R or um, by this board. So tell me again why they have to do anything legally? Do they have to do anything in terms of allowing frontage or access right now? Well, no, they, they can't have the parcel B, though. That's the thing. They're asking for a waiver for parcel B. Okay, they're and, asking for it. Right. And you, I, I respectfully suggest that you can't grant that access mm -hmm. waiver because the spike strip is pro, uh, prohibited under the regulations. Where is parcel B? You, parcel B is, is strip this, this strip oh, right this here strip. that is, in essence, a, um, in, uh, uh, owned by the homeowners association so that it could never be purchased by the Camparellis property and therefore um, there, would, there would be no way that the Camparellises could ever access this road and the, the regulations prohibit this type of activity for a variety of reasons that we discussed the last time we were here um, and in order to grant a waiver you'd have to find that number one it's, it's consistent with the intent of the subdivision bylaw and your regulations, which there, there is no justification for it other than to deny us access, and that it's there's some public interest uh, associated with granting this waiver. And as we discussed the last time, and as my letters to the board and, and to councils uh, argue, the only public interest being served by this buffer strip is the pecuniary interest of the developer. It's to so that he can build a smaller road and and not uh, and, and tell his his buyers uh, that there will never be any other access over this road, and that's respectfully not a public interest that would support the grant of a waiver. They they, they argue also that there's back land that's being donated to the to the town as part of this project and again respectfully that there's no nexus between the public interest that they're saying is being served and the specific substance of the waiver that they're asking for in other words this land is going to be deeded to the town whether this buffer waiver is granted or not 
um, they, in order to have a public interest finding that's going to survive on appeal, they have to show you that there's a link between your granting this and the specific public interest that they're advocating. That's, that's how I see the law. Mr. So, Chairman, if I may, yeah. there are uh, benefits associated with that strip that does allow us to maintain the natural uh, tree canopy that's there and the low brush. It does serve a purpose. It does block us from what is the parking area of the apartment building. I will grant you that. But the remainder allows some break in that view shed along Ash Street. There is some brush through here. The rest is that area we talked about associated with the residential property. That does allow the opportunity to maintain some kind of green strip through there, the view shed along Ash Street, as well as providing that screening. Again, I don't see the public interest in that either, but how am I not surprised? <laughs> Can I, for the chair? Go ahead. Uh, I, I was contacted by some of the neighbors that, that aren't here, um, and they were concerned about uh, overcrowding in the neighborhood, which is something we mentioned at our last meeting. Anyways, uh, and I was told that the property, the Casarellas, Camparellas, is a as a apartment house situation. No, there are no four unit. It's a multifamily. It is a multifamily. Okay, so it is an apartment house as opposed to. I live in it. It's a wonderful house. I'm yes. not knocking it. I, I, yeah. I don't, I think, I'm just having, I want to context sure. the understanding of the situation. So it's it's not, it's different than what I understood at our last meeting. And I just wanted to understand fully uh, what's going on since I've been concerned about overcrowding and density and things like that. Um, the other thing is um, that strip, I think, I do, I'm on a green committee, I, the more trees the better, um, but what's best for the town, last meeting we were asking both parties to work out a solution that's mutually beneficial to have less uh, side streets uh, happening, so not two side streets for two projects, one side street for two projects, and I hear that's partially possible right now, um, aside from these letters. Uh, I think that's a possibility. Is that something we can talk about? I, we, I think we would love to be able to use this road for to access the two-lot subdivision that we would plan to build in the future. Yes, I mean, re reducing the impervious surface is something that we agree is important. I just don't get how I'm the one that comes forward. I pay good yeah. money for this piece of property. To, and, you know, it's a good-sized piece of property for me to do just two houses. Um, you know, I'm not trying to because squeeze something into a small area. If I may, um, the size of the drive um, is <coughs> too small, in my opinion, as uh, on this, and that if you joined forces, you could have the proper width for a uh, sub division without having... Well, wait a second. Can, can I, that's wait my a second. I, I, I think, let me let me try it in another context, and, I, and it was kind of a discussion I think we were going towards the last time. Uh, the applicant has basically given up the land and given up the land that allows a cul-de-sac to be built. So he's already got that much skin in the game. Correct. A and in the Jennifer's memo, there's an a, attempt at a potential condition that says this road will remain a private road servicing only two lots as a common drive. If in the future more lots are proposed to be connected, the road will have to be constructed to town standards at the time of the proposal and at the new developer's expense. So that was to try to... Yeah, and we have obviously have a big problem with that. So... Like well, it, well, well, you can't have it, everything. Uh, can, I, I, and, I, I yeah. just yeah. Yeah. okay. Go. So my question is, I mean, if if we're talking about a, a basically a, a driveway to serve for two homes, how is this different from McDermott Lane? It's no different. Okay, I, mean, I don't see it. The the McDermott yeah, Lane added. is that the parcel B, which is on McDermott Lane, connected to the open space that was given to the town in the back. 
so that would, you know a hiking trail could go over to EMC Park. That right. that would be the difference. If if parcel B can go went to there, then you'd have the nexus, I think, to the open space. So is that something that can be done? <coughs> Along, along parcel B. Right. Extend saying. parcel yeah. B to back to all the way back. The parcel of the, the portion of the acres that are going to be gifted to the town. That could be done. And provide access? I mean how is that beneficial does he, does he to the town? Does he have to provide access? Well how is it beneficial to the town if it's just the, I, I can get to, I can get there there to there from Absolutely. Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. I mean I don't think you're going to get a free ride on, on a uh, new street. Right. You're not well, looking how? for a free ride. And let, just let me be, Can't they let do me clarify what I what did I, and go through? The, they have plenty of frontage on their own property. Why can't they go and get their own land? Because What's wrong with that? The, the per, if I may, the, 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 per, the, the argument that we're making is that it makes more sense from a planning perspective and is more consistent with the regulations if two abutting subdivisions utilize the same roadway. That's... That's the planning principle that, that is motivating our argument. And if, we, if, if the planning board wants to have parallel you know, side streets all up and down this road on Ash Street, oh. I guess that's a way to go. But that's not what we think the regulations provide for. Now, with respect to the proposed finding, <coughs> I, I, I understand that if there's a submission in the future. And understand, we have no immediate plans to submit a subdivision application. We've de done a, a preliminary in the past, so there's some percolating thought about how to do this, but we have no definitive uh, understanding of what this might look like. But if you make a finding that says the road has to be built out to full spec, that may not be appropriate given what's proposed. I mean, if there's a, if a, there's a modest subdivision here that could uh, uh, utilize the roadway as currently constructed or it needed to be improved in some fashion and the de new developer had to be responsible for that, I would think that you would leave that decision to the future planning board. And if you, if you try to uh, foresee the future and, and predict what might, it might look like when we do submit our subdivision application, you might be putting conditions on that, that aren't uh, helpful for everybody. I'm, I'm sure that this applicant would not want to see us to submit a subdivision application and then have this road built out to full spec. Well, if if it's more than two lots being served by it, this planning board would 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 be looking at a twenty foot wide roadway. I think it's different. And and I, I and again, and respectfully, that's a this is more designed from where I'm at right now. I understand. That's more than two lots. And so right. on and so forth. Right. This serves three lots. It's a three lot subdivision. So no, there's, there's two, two lots. lots. Two there's, lots. There's two three lots in the subdivision. The frontage, no, no. The frontage of lot one is this on is the front street. This I, is one lot. You have duplicate frontage. This is a three-lot subdivision. Mm -hmm. right, our access is here. We've chosen this to be our access. So we have uh, two. I guess if you'd back up for me a, for a moment, that access that we're giving somewhere in this general direction, doesn't that achieve uh, your goal of eliminating it doesn't extra achieve, curve cut? It doesn't allows access into this parcel? Doesn't that but, but achieve it does, the goal you have? Doesn't necessarily achieve what the planning board would do on extension of cul-de-sacs, which we have a no extension on cul-de-sacs unless there's a substantial uh, benefit to the town. Benefit to the town. You said you had a preliminary plan. How is that going to work without my <coughs> property? How are you doing that? I, I wasn't around for that, so I, I don't know. Um, I can't answer that directly. Um, do, you, do you want to speak to that? or? Uh, the, the original yeah. preliminary plan? Yeah, it's just curious. Sure. Joe actually knows it pretty well because he drew up the plans for us. Um, it was just, I mean, it was just, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was at the time a family subdivision, and we were trying to put uh, two lots here, and uh, we didn't get a real good sense that we were able to do that. So we, you know, we, we're, we, st <laughs> we stay put, so... And what was the access to those other? It would have been coming through here, just coming through this way. So it would have been parallel right here with that. So, I mean, the idea here is that, you know, just reading through the subdivision rules, it, 
it, it, it says you, that you can't put a buffer strip in to, to block your neighbors. So, I mean, it seems very clear to me, and especially when, I mean, it, it was well known that uh, that we had wanted to do that, and it kind of kind of took me aback, especially when you, when it was known that we've been wanting to do that for quite some time. So, uh, yeah. There's no need for the buffer strip whatsoever. That's why they call it a spite strip. <clears throat> and we're not advocating that it be built any you know, any more, just we want small not... Small as possible. Yes, yeah, small is good. Uh, we just don't want the buffer strip there, that's all. It's not... And, and also, bear in mind that this when, this was not a corner lot when, when we purchased it, 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 you know, but this would be technically creating it, making it... We'd be losing a lot of privacy. And, you know, there's there's something to be said for that. I, I It's an unpleasant thing to think about, so... We also tried to purchase the property, and... Um, or, or stonewalled. We can't get into that, but... You're so trying to purchase what property? Which property were you to purchase? The one that he purchased? Yes. Well, that's off the table now. Good. He owns it. I mean, that's... Right. No. Mm -hmm. Great, but... It's... I am... Like, Drink. Go ahead. I, I hadn't heard a response, though. If, if you... I can still sell you the property with that help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, son. Yeah. <laughs> We can talk. It can still work. But my question, my question stands: <laughs> Would you be willing to work with them in certain in the circumstance of a full-size road that would be open for them to continue <coughs> building when they do their project? No, I would not. No, I have people waiting in the wings to put houses. No, but this has all been worked out in my mind. I'm trying to, you know, I purchased the property with the intention I came to the board with a rough idea of what I wanted to do. And, you know, we continue with that. And, um, it changes a lot of what I do, Frank, as well. We talk about more impervious area, um, a more sophisticated <laughs> complex roadway network, the turnaround at the end. That drainage basin uh, may not fit right in that back corner anymore. It, it changes a lot of aspects of what we do as well. But keeping in mind, I think, and it's the road, it's driveway, it's too small for what you're doing. It's it's crowding in more than... It's too small it, for two houses. It, the way it's designed right now, the way it's presented right there on that, on that, on that paper. It was just done up at McDermott, same thing. I don't understand. Yeah, I, I think for two houses, you've got to, that's, you know, that meets our, our common driveway I definition. didn't think I had to tie in with the neighbor's nope. property. I came in here to do two homes. I knew we could prove we could get a subdivision in there. I had the space. I was hoping to get that wave down to a common drive for two homes. I thought it was a simple, simple plan. I had the, you know option of maybe trying to put another house further in and I I did away with that I just I just I was fine getting the two and then I figured the town would end up with the balance that wasn't needed uh, to do the two homes um, and now all of a sudden you know I'm trying to some clear, clarity on this with the three homes on that property uh, one home being the original house on Ash Street and two new homes proposed behind it, does it not need a full-size road for the other two houses? Because it's a subdivision, not not that it's a shared driveway. It's it's too, it's not, there's not enough frontage for shared driveways for those three homes on Ash Street. Did, but no, but this it's, this house has frontage on it's, Ash Street. It has its, its own drive, frontage. It's There's driveway. only two house lots. It's the same right. as McDermott. McDermott has an old I'm house. I'm looking at this, front. and I'm not, not talking about McDermott. Right. And I'm, I'm not even prepared to talk about McDermott. I'm looking at this right now as far as our bylaws. My understanding is is that it needs a full size road to be a subdivision road. Oh, it's right. oh, Wayne, do you want to comment on it's that? My understanding is it's not enough frontage for uh, two additional homes in Battle. So he was requesting a waiver of the 20-foot wide road to construct the 12-foot wide road instead. Yeah, but but can can one of the, the can 25 Ash Street still can have its frontage on Ash Street? Sure. 
Okay. It, doesn't, it doesn't affect it. So any road that serves 10 lots or less is required to be 20 feet wide. Correct. Ash. So he's requesting a waiver for that. Yep. Okay. So. Which is my point. I know. We, I'm sorry. We have examined a couple of spots. McDermott is a popular one this evening. But Spring Lane, Spring Street should be 193. I'm looking at this, and I'm wondering, is there a way you guys could do a full-size road? And that one functions it. as well with the turnout. So we see a couple of instances where the 12-foot width and the shoulders with the turnout works extremely well. Two rights will make a wrong. If we did something, I don't know. Well, wait a minute. Why are you saying this is wrong? We I think because the bylaw has a certain safety. And he's asking for a waiver on that from us. Sure. So we have to decide that. Sure. But... Where the problem is with the two different groups of neighbors, we're looking at this problem twice because they're going to have similar issues, perhaps. And there's a way to resolve two problems with one solution. And that would be a full size road built out to both lots where both sides can use it and it's, uh, the safety is there with the width of the road for emergency vehicles and we're not overcrowding and adding additional side streets. See, my issue here is I think this applicant's being hijacked by, by the neighbor here to, to make something work where now the burden is being put on the original applicant. And I don't think that's fair. You're asking me to come back and do a full road. Do you realize the cost of that? Um, I do realize the that. The two house um, lots? I'd be opposed to going against a bylaw on that. <laughs> but I hear, I, hear, I hear your concerns, friend, and I want to respond to that. Independent of their position, um, uh, this is how I feel about a subdivision in this situation. Um, I'm not happy that they can't work this out and they haven't worked this out. Uh, and the, these letters sure. and lawyers I back and I'm not glad to read them. Um, we gave them what they want. Well, I think at this point, basically, I think we're, we're kind of where we were the other way other than the fact we've got couple more lawyers hours built. <laughs> uh, I would like to maybe have the board ask for Rafe for some counsel on this one, particularly about the, the spite strip and, and our ability to waive it or not in his recommendation. Quite frankly, I'm not crazy about putting the town in a legal suit jeopardy for a two-lot subdivision, which is what I'm feeling right this moment of where it's headed. So I'm encouraging both of you guys to come up with reasonable approaches and try to resolve the differences. And I, I think I'm kind of in the same way as I was last time. But as Fran, I think, said, and I think I kind of said the same thing, you both got to put some skin in the game uh, for that. Now, if I'm willing to to build it up with a two, you know, a driveway, but there's got to be a way that this yeah. can be upgraded if if we're going to, you know, allow a budding frontage on it. I mean, it's you know, it's a, it's a step, but uh, and, and 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 I do realize it's a very expensive step to build 400 feet of road for. You know, it's not practical to build 400 feet of road for two house lots. Uh, yeah. John? If I can, looking at it, and this is sort of personal input, um, I can see exactly the applicant's point of view, and I think from the start, I'm gonna, as I explain it more, uh, I think the fact that you're allowing a break kind of eliminates the spite strip because you can never say it's a spite strip and then the applicant is stating you allow a crossing of the spite strip it, it's it's a conflict so uh, what I would suggest maybe since there is some type of waiver necessary is look at widening uh, maybe on the adjacent property or plans to widen from your 40-foot access to the road. So, and then it becomes the shared driveway for the back instead of having the, the entire length being 20 feet wide. And then from their access point that you're showing, that becomes their issue there. 
but from that joining together from, I don't know what the distance is from the, the current street to that 40-foot access, maybe that is looked at either from the start or ability in the future to be 20 feet wide. So the benefit to the town is we have a one, we have one cut, it's 20 feet wide, you don't have to do your entire driveway back at 20 feet, and maybe the incremental cost between your 12 feet and the 20 feet is borne by the adjacent property if they decide in the future to pursue it. So since there was a waiver necessary, it may not be the best solution, but it seems to be a possible solution, just to throw out. There. Just for clarity, John, if, hypothetically, if we chose this location for the access into here, right. that is station 2 plus 0, 200 feet from okay. Ash Street. So are you saying that the first 200? Or if, until the until the end of the break. Under the break. So come back 40 feet. I don't know. Because where is the 40 feet starting? Right here at, okay. I'm just choosing this hypothetical right. spot at, at 200. So the first 200 is right. 20 foot wide the and the remainder. The ability to do it at a future date okay. if they decide that they want to go ahead with the, yeah. with their project. Well, that space is there, right? Basically, mm -hmm. all right, out of the 40 foot. We're happy to keep talking on this, um, and you, you made some suggestions. I, I'm not sure I fully grasp all of it, um, but seeing it or talking about it on a plan, um, happy to uh, to work with the developer to try and come up with something. If there's indeed something that can be worked out, we sure. did. We did try to. We had some issues where we were a little bit uh, later in the schedule, and and we did try to reach out to to your council before this meeting but um, yeah, and had some available. and had some ideas about how to how to work it out so we've, we've been trying to noodle it Chuck Mr. Chairman with regard to what Mr. Ferrari was suggesting the applicant has shown that they have the ability to build a 20 foot wide road so that's clearly possible in the future and that preserves that right if the if the applicant if the neighbor ever comes in with a plan Clearly, the planning board understands that you can put a 20-foot road there. It would be their cost, at their, but there's no plan on the table. There's nothing even in the right. works. Right. So by allowing that 40-foot easement across that strip, they give them access to potentially coming back with their own plan in front of the planning board and saying, we want to do this on our land with this amount of these number of lots, and then the planning board will have in their files a plan that shows a 20-foot road. They can always go back and build that. That, that right is preserved, and it's clearly, it's clearly possible. I think that's what I stated, is yes. not to be built necessarily at the current time, but have it available in the future if it's developed. Well, it's one of the things I think I need to know is if we we're going to build in that 20-foot thing, that's the, the detention pond would, could be expanded to be supported. You know, it doesn't have to be dug today, but would, would work in the future. You know, it's and assuming that everything that's on their side would would be uh, dealt with on that property, but I still get down to the the question of our cul-de-sac rules and regulations and what's what's the operable world exceptional circumstances, and I don't know what the exceptional circumstances that the board could hang on to develop the third and, or fourth lot on. His exceptional circumstances is he provides access from the center school area to the other piece of property. And that, I think, is a key item. Chuck? Mr. Chairman, again, if, if there are exceptional circumstances on a future possible development, there's no way that that should fall on the current applicant. That's, that's the future applicant. That's their land. They have to develop. If, if they need exceptional circumstances, they got to show they have them. Yeah. It's not up to Brian to bear that. And I, and I think there's an undue uh, burden that's being put on the current applicant right now 
to somehow plan for their future development, which isn't even on the table. I would agree. Especially because I have the land that can make this happen, and they do not. Right. I mean. Not, nothing we've said is anything other than comply with the regulations. So. But there's a disagreement, and, and Brian's and council is not here today. Would, I, I don't want one council to say this is the way it is. It's an interpretation of the code, and I think that that's, you know, that's why I've asked for Ray to, to opine in on just that subject. Let's continue this. So All I right. think we're ready to maybe continue. Yeah. Yeah. Also, when you come back, I'm really interested in where all the the drainage is coming in and out of that pond because that was my subject from the last time around. Yeah, quite frankly, we've been on hold till we knew what this animal was going to look like, sure. and then we could assess the impacts. And now that we know where our heading in a direction, I we can we can address all those issues yeah. in the peer review. I mean, I I don't want to spend a lot of time in land court over this subject. Quite frankly, I've got better things to do with my personal life. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. The back parcel that's being gifted to the town, how many acres is that? I was looking and I couldn't, I, I thought I saw 4.79. Like okay. Yeah, I thought I saw it was like about five. But, yeah. And does that connect to anything? It connects it landlocked? Center, all the way, no, that connects all the way west. The, center the, school property. Center, center school, school to all the, does, all through the, Prestwick Lane, through yeah, the yeah, Legacy yeah. Farms. Perfect. This is a link from, from Center School to Clinton Street. Okay. Yeah. The corridor in there, it's available for hiking that trails. That easement is actually owned by me, and that town has the rights now to cross that easement. Okay. If I may, Ken? Yeah. I don't know how appropriate it is to respond to a member from the audience who's a realtor who wants to sell houses, but I don't think it's undue pressure to uphold the bylaw, and that's my position here, that this is what we, we do, uh, and we consider projects, and... Um, I certainly won't, don't hope I didn't give anyone the impression I'm expecting if there's a joint project that one side pays all of it and the other side doesn't. That's not my intention. So hopefully you don't think that and you don't think that. Uh, but otherwise, other than that, the bylaw is quite clear what we follow. So, um, I want to get us involved in court battles and these letters from lawyers back and forth. You know, neighbors can work it out and I'm sure it can be worked out. And well, hopefully, hopefully they will, Frank. Yep. Right? And Leave it at that. Good. Okay. So, yes. Uh, is, is there any conceivable possibility that the board might approve something between a 10 and 12 and a 20 instead of either or? I mean, if a 10 and 12 drive works for two houses, why like can't a 12 to 14 and a 14 and 16 work for three four houses? We are, we are using the common driveway standard is justification technically for the waiver, and that's only allowed for a two-house subdivision. Other than that, I think we're at 18 to 20 feet, I believe, as a standard. as a standard, which is primarily fire code, I think, at this point. And so, yeah. that's that's the difference. So, so 14 doesn't doesn't buy you anything, and you know it's going to. I won't say double the, the detention area, but 40% more or something like that, just <laughs> off the top of my head. It, it, the reason I ask is it might help to work out some sort of an agreement between two parties. I think, I think you're into, you know, you're into... Uh, it's going to make a huge difference in that detention area. Could be. Could be. Yeah. It's going to be... So. Okay. Meet April 25th and then May 9th. Well, I, I think we're going to need... I think we need 25th for legacy farms. Yeah. Well, let's see. We need the 25th for DPW. Right. Yeah, we'll be all set for that. So, let's see. What time have you got available on the 9th? Um, the only thing we've scheduled is 7.30 he uh, hearing. It's for the 
stormwater management permit and the special permit for the solar application at 201. I remember right, we're thinking about maybe continuing that one without hearing anything. Until after the election, I believe that Yeah, because otherwise we're not going to have enough members to vote on it. Yeah. I haven't officially asked them yet, but I can do that if you want. I think you might. Okay. I mean, whether whether they say yes or no, we're going to probably do the same do thing anyway, because anyway. <laughs> otherwise, practically, that's where we are. Um, so I look for it to continue uh, at 7.30 on May 9th. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you very much for Thank your time. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Well, the legacy folks are coming in. Can did Elaine go out to go find them? Or did she sneak out? She's going across the Elaine? She's leaving. Elaine, can you find McDowell? Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Elaine. <laughs> okay, let me, let's get rid of a couple of cats and dogs and what, is the rest of their, your team coming in? Everybody's here. Okay, let's get rid of a couple of cats and dogs. Uh, you saw my letter to the chairman of the Department of Public Utilities. I uh, have not received any response. Uh, you know, I don't know. We'll give it to the next meeting, and if we don't get anything, maybe we'll form it up with a formal written letter that says about the same thing, only has pictures as of that date. I, I know I took a couple of nice pictures of poles in the middle of the road, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's it's a little more than a little frustrating. Not that I'd suggest it, but how hard is it to run one of those over with a truck? <laughs> <laughs> I just wouldn't do it on TV. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would never suggest that. No. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're on TV. <laughs> yeah. So that one's kind of where it is. Uh, let's see. Master plan update. Brian has got one that he's ready to, chapter he's ready to give you. And cool. Matt's going to be, it's going to be done this week. Do we owe any other chapters? Um, Fran has one out. Oh, Fran has got it. What's that? Master plan chapter? Yes. We've met, but we're not still Oh, yeah, that was what you were saying. Yeah. You got one more, to, one yeah. more shot at it? Yeah, I got one more shot at it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll get it done, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think there we go. There we are. We're all set. You're all set? Mr. Chairman. Okay. We will... Uh, you for I guess another hour here and then we'll finish up with the rest of our stuff um, okay I'd like to reopen the public hearings for the North East Northwest and North Club villages at Legacy Farms it's the application for Osmond site plan review uh, tonight we'll leave the special permits on the table because we're short a member, then we want to preserve her voting rights. Okay. So, let's see. Where were we last time? We were working the outline a little bit, and we also kind of had, uh, I think you guys are coming back with a new kind of look. Uh, with all the plans we had kind of talked about from before, is that kind of where we're at? Uh, at the, Mr. Chairman, if yep. I may, at the last meeting we went down quite a few of the items on the outline, and since that meeting we've submitted a number of items back to the board uh, in response to our discussions, and uh, and we've brought those items with us tonight that we can we can pass out to the board, and then also we have some presentation material that uh, Matt and John from Bowler Engineering uh, can, can walk you through and um, we do have uh, we do have an exhibit that shows some private restricted land um, areas um, that, that we discussed last meeting we do have a, a north parcel restoration uh, in more detail that was discussed that was asked for uh, last meeting uh, and then 
Um, so we have those, and then we also prepared a uh, construction management plan and some exhibits that go with that that's been submitted to the board. If, when did we get this construction management plan? Yeah, we just okay. I, I do not want to talk about the construction management plan. We'll take it, and if you can send it also electronically in. And so that first I'm going to start with beta reviewing it. Mm -hmm. sure. I, mean, I think everyone knows what we're kind of expecting out of it, and I'd rather have them do most of the work than us doing it at first. So uh, let's, let's let them do construction management. You can refer to it or in the discussions if it's helpful for today. But basically, uh, let's, we're going to leave that one off the, off the table today. That sounds like a great way to proceed. And then the fourth thing that we uh, that we have here to present to you tonight are some exhibits with some uh, plan changes that address some of the hammerhead and some of the uh, access um, comments that we received from the board members at the last meeting. And Matt has some exhibits and some ideas and some changes that we can make that we'd like to present to the board tonight as well. Okay. Let's we'll start with that. Sure. Okay. okay. Why well, we're happy to take Thank stuff on a, on a, like today. Yeah. Also, most of our members like to read it over the weekend. So, you know, we'll we'll take it with. Without giving you the full set of comments, because you got to think about things. At least I do. Some of you guys are smarter than me that uh, you can get it on the on the fly. But uh, anyway, but go ahead. We do appreciate that, and, and we uh, there wasn't a lot of time in between meetings, and we certainly wanted to come back to the table with some uh, some ideas. Some ideas to uh, to get your input on. Okay. Uh, so for starters, one of the things we did discuss last week was the um, the use of hammerheads, which the fire department has, has signed off on. They've, they've had no objections to them, uh, but we understand um, the board's desire to see more uh, looped cul-de-sacs incorporated, and we've actually uh, come up with a couple of solutions to provide those in the two remaining locations where we did have or the three actually, where we did have uh, hammerhead. <coughs> so if you look in the uh, the Northwest Village, that's the first exhibit I just passed out. You can see faded underneath is where we were showing the hammerhead before. And without doing too much to the layout, we were able to incorporate uh, a cul-de-sac there. Uh, further up to the east, uh, we're able to incorporate a cul-de-sac uh, but we are going to just need to condense some of the units a little bit uh, using a narrower footprint on those homes, but we think we'll be able to get that to work without any issue. The, the math works on it, the, the measurements and the dimensions uh, for us to be able to provide a cul-de-sac so in that This is the one that's well. up in the upper right hand? Right so, here, yes. So those end up being a different unit? Correct. Okay. Yep. That's correct. You keep pretty much the same distance in between the houses? Exactly, yes. We're okay. maintaining the same. How much is the lower part? The lower part is. Oh, this one we were uh, already showing as a cul-de-sac before, so we just didn't didn't need to make that. It's actually not a cul-de-sac in the full set of plans that were submitted, but we've already explored the idea of integrating that into the plan set. So that one, Thank you. we have no issue doing that. Go ahead. Can I ask just a general question? Sure. Do consumers have a preference? Hammerhead versus cul-de-sac. Uh, you know, no, I, I don't think so. Um, a lot of times with the cul-de-sacs, we can do a variety of different treatments in the interior of it. Um, here we're proposing landscaping and some um, different types of shrubs and trees. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and others, um, we, do, we do mulch and rocks and, and perennials and things like that. Uh, where a hammerhead, you can't you can't do that as much, but there's less impervious surface with a hammerhead. So it's just um, sometimes it's how it fits with the land a little bit better, and and a lot of times the towns dictate it to us as well. Usually the fire chief weighs in, or 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 the town, the, the planning boards. Um, so, but they both work, and in this case, as Matt mentioned, 
we did meet with the fire chief and he was, cool he was away, okay right? with either with either one as long as the specific turning movements for a specific truck um, worked and, and they did that. Cool. My, my preference is, is the cul-de-sac just because I don't back up so well. <laughs> <laughs> my thought is I got one of these older SUVs that doesn't have the camera, no camera on in the back. Yeah. 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 I mean, my thought is just let the market dictate that, right? That's what mm -hmm. these guys do. I mean, that's why my rock wall keeps getting a little bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Any other questions on this exhibit? I think we're all set with that one. Okay. One of the other comments we heard uh, last week was if you look at the, um, the Northeast Village, where we had a cul-de-sac that we were calling uh, Peach Street, uh, one of the thoughts was, well, couldn't that connect through uh, and eliminate that cul-de-sac? Uh, we wanted to study it. We, we want to make sure it would work with the grading, uh, because the way we had originally looked at it, we had some grade separation between <coughs> this level and this level here. Uh, but we did take a look at it, and we, we do think we can get that, get that to work as well. So now instead of having a cul-de-sac here with, you can see the grayed-out units underneath, that road continues up to Chestnut Street and would align with the future phase connection. Uh, and we would just reconfigure those units so it actually pulls this one back up in line with the road and just rotates this one. Uh, and then we do some shifting of units in here to uh, to get that to work. We have the same unit count, same distance between. We've just kind of shuffled the deck a little bit to uh, to get that to work. Uh, the grading will need to change. Obviously, Peach Street uh, was climbing as this was diving down, but we are going to be able to lower the profile a little bit of Peach Street to make that connection. The, work from the, the, the grade standpoint. will not be... More than the X number, what percent did, was the maximum, I think, the last time we talked about well, 7 or 8 percent? Yes, it was in that range. Um, yeah, we, I mean, we need to cut the grades back a lot from where we currently have it. We, we just couldn't connect it at the end of the road and dip down, so we'll have to redesign the road heading heading further back for probably about 600 feet or so. Uh, so it'll end up being a little more cut into here. Correct. But we, out, we actually have more room to do that now that we're pulling this unit back in line with that road. So... And that Shouldn't that takes takes some houses and brings them a little bit further away from Legacy Farms Road. Uh, it does. That's correct. Which is a good thing. I think it brings a lot better yeah. connectivity to that neighborhood. I, I like the idea that you can access it from two ends. Yeah, you can come in this entrance now or this entrance. Now. And I th I think it might help to spread the load over the two entrances to the facility, you know, to the thing? Traffic-wise. Traffic-wise? I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. I have a quick question. Sure. Yes. Just yeah. talking yeah, about cool. what we had talked earlier, you know, previous meeting about um, neighborhood feel. The homes on the north east side of Peach Street, those are all simplexes? Or just the lines, the lines with the, you know, previous buildings? Yes. Yeah, those are all simplexes. Right. And on the southwest, those are duplexes? That's correct. Those two? And then if we go up to Chestnut Street, the simplexes that back up to the homes on Chestnut, those houses on Chestnut are also simplexes, or those duplexes? Uh, on it's a different road anyway, but yes, these those. Are, these are duplexes. Okay. These are simplexes. Okay. Is there, would it make sense to have this, or explain to me why you chose the simplexes on the, the middle strip as opposed to putting the duplexes back to back? And, and I guess my rationale, you know, because it looks like about the same number of space along there, mm -hmm. the back of a simplex looks, I think, better than the back of a duplex, looking at it from Legacy Farms Road. I mean, uh, the duplexes you see a lot of, a lot of porches. Yes, yeah, so, so one of the thoughts that, that we had there is that it's a 2D plan. Um, so... I can't see the streets. I don't know. Well, so me. Legacy Farms Road, then this is Peach, and this is Chestnut. So oh, yeah. it's, it's so stepping down from... Yeah, so Chestnut Street is a lot lower than Peach Street. So one of the things that we wanted to do was put the, the simplexes that were backing up into the open space 
that are higher than, than the lower road so that they would have views of the open space from from um, So the simplexes Street. are here. I'm, I'm more worried about the, the inner one here. If you took the ones on Peach Street and put the simplexes on the, the high side of the street as opposed to the low side, would that not be a better view into from, I'll say, Legacy Farms Road South? I'm just asking. Yeah. So, well, so from our perspective, um, we wanted to put the simplexes on the non-Legacy Farms roadside because of the, the, the views and the elevation changes going down back into the open space. And from the views from Legacy Farms Road North, I think our plan is to, is to design and to provide an extensive raised landscape berm in between the duplexes and the spine road um, with plantings on top. Um, and that's something that we're, we're going to design into the plan and with the space along with the, the berm of the plantings, we think, and, and the elevation difference between Legacy Farms to the backs of those homes. Well, it looks like um, you got a wet uh, a detention pond or something there too. Yeah, that's a detention right, pond. There, associated there would be with the additional road. landscape though in between the <coughs> detention pond and those units, um, which I can show you on a, an enlarged plan. But we did um, we did try to pull the development back away from. We mentioned this at a previous hearing, away from Legacy Farms Road quite a bit more than the original master plan special permit. Uh, allowed for. Mm -hmm. So we've increased that buffer by quite a bit and provided additional uh, enhanced landscaping in that area. If you look at the enlarged color plan here, it's a little easier to see. Ken, so you're, you're right, we do have that uh, detention area there, but you can see the this is all new planting that would be in between Legacy Farms Road and the backs of those units and would be on the unit side of that detention area so you would be still buffering that view which which is in addition to all of the street trees that are being planted on Legacy Farms Road as part of the uh, well, roadway construction the chair. project. Yeah. So are you saying that from Legacy Farms Road you won't see the backs of you won't see the backs of the duplexes? We're providing screening. I mean, I'm not suggesting you won't get a peek through in in some locations, but this is lower in elevation than Legacy Farms Road. So instead, we'll look in the back. We'll look into the bedroom window. <laughs> <laughs> we're providing a berm and evergreen planting all along that edge. I, I took a drive around there, and as he's picturing it here, presenting it here, I can kind of imagine what he's saying, and it's hopefully going to look better than say you're driving on Clinton Street. Uh, that kind of um, they're yeah. taking a more careful approach, I think. So uh, when I look at your original plan that you had up there, the one on the right, those look like from this distance they're all duplexes and now I see a row of simplexes in there. Yeah, we on, on that latest exhibit that Matt's just presenting, we did put in the simplexes on in the... In here. Are yeah. you changing the simplex-duplex count difference or no. are you just no, rearranging no, them just somewhere? Rearrange rearrange them with with the exhibit. So where did the duplexes go? So the duplex is just from here yeah. into this row here. Okay, so they so they're they're here now. They were here, now they're right here. And, and essentially, we are looking at the views from the rears of both of those with the elevation change between them. So we wanted the simplex units, which are the you know the higher value units, to have the views that are that are overlooking the elevation and into the open space. And it was just one of the things that we. We were looking at a little bit more closely. So that changes the concept of duplex neighborhoods and simplex neighborhoods. If I'm on the right-hand side of the street, I'm a simplex guy. If I'm on the left-hand side, I'm a, I'm a duplex. We do have that condition in, in a few other locations. We, okay. we do that in the... Uh, the um, North Club Village, to some extent already <coughs> along Legacy Farms Road North. Okay. Um, so it's not um, it's not the norm, but it's it's certainly something where we do want to try to capture those those views and those values for the single family uh, homes where we where we can. Okay. Is there any other board member comments or public comments on this? There is a proximity of uh, 
Sure. Yeah. Uh, where is the proximity of, um, of Wilson Street? Oh, gosh. Oh. Up and over. Wilson Street is, so the neighborhood we're talking about on this enlargement is right here. Yeah. Wilson Street is all the way down Legacy Farms Road. It's way off the oh, sheet here. The sheet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you for showing the connection of peach into chestnut. Sure. Okay. All right. What are the other uh, items we discussed mm -hmm. last week on the next sheet was uh, back in the Northeast Village here, the comment was made that uh, is there another access point we could provide back into uh, into this cul-de-sac neighborhood back here on Holly Street, uh, similar to the way we treated <coughs> the Northwest Village with the, I'm sorry, this is That's so okay, hard for you to okay. see. Into the Northwest Village, we had that bifurcated boulevard road treatment uh, with a park space in the middle. Uh, so we're looking at providing that same condition on Holly Street now, uh, where you'd have a, a double-barreled boulevard entry back into that loop uh, for a second means of, of egress out of there. Or, uh, I don't, to the chair, I don't think that was the, the, uh, the question. Um, I think it was more of a question of having completely separate in mm -hmm. second access roads. So this is still one access road. If there's a problem here, this whole neighborhood's cut off. If there's a fire truck coming through and there's a pickup truck on fire, they can't get by it without well, some... I, I don't know. But now I, there are two 18-foot yeah, travel two, ways two to get back into foot. there. Yeah, so. That's 20, <laughs> the 20-foot? 20 20 foot? Yeah. yeah. It's I, I was a requirement of the fire, yeah. fire chief to make all roads at sure. a minimum of 20 feet. I, I, and I, it's 30 I, feet in between, too. So if a, a tree fell, for instance, it would only block one side. That's why you find boulevards in many communities when they're serving more houses. You have that larger separation in the middle. So if something happened on one side of the road, you could you could use the other side. It's like two separate streets. It is better, but I wasn't the person who brought it up. But I, I, I would like to see a second access road aside from that. But it wasn't I, my... Where would you put it, though? But it's a good improvement. It's a big, yeah, a big yeah, improvement, exactly. I think. Mm -hmm. I mean... I don't. I don't have too much of a trouble with where, where we're at. I mean, the only other place you could kind of put it would be off of this other little island thing. But you know, shift a couple of houses and kind of come go do, across right? there. But right. I mean, it's it's kind of the same amount of roadway one way or the it's other. One half dozen almost. I, yeah. The boulevard thing. I like that actually. I I don't have as big a problem with it. The planning board in the 90s hated boulevards for subdivisions, but this is not a subdivision per se. This is a <laughs> large condo project. You know, the, yeah. the, uh, the, the, the road into uh, Valleywood, people hated, mm -hmm. hated that one. Yeah, yeah. Rockywood too, Rockywood. Rockywood is the same yeah. kind of, yeah. But to me, this at least gets my original objection of a lot of houses that were only served by a 20-foot road. Now, now, one question on that, though, is on the left side or the right side, is that your inbound point, or are both sides going to be? This would be inbound, and this would be outbound. Right. But from an emergency, the fire department has no problem on going the, the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> The other, the other nice thing this does is we, we had talked about in a previous hearing trying to provide a, a pocket park for this neighborhood, uh, which would be on this corner here. Uh, and, and this makes a nice connection <coughs> to that pocket park and really provides some meaningful open space uh, for the residents to use. Similar to the way uh, the entry is treated at the Northwest Village, you have that uh, linear park that's between the two boulevard uh, entries which terminates in that pocket park on the corner here, we would have that same treatment right here on, on this corner. Uh, so that in our mind, that was another nice reason for doing the, the boulevard this way. Just as you're exiting that subdivision area, yeah, not, not on that street, the other one. The closest yeah. to, to you. 
down the bottom. Yeah, okay. You're yeah. right there, right? Yeah. But you're coming in, but then you're coming out, right? You got you got to zig out, mm -hmm. uh, not that one, up above, up higher, right? Yeah, but right. So on the keep going a little bit in, right there. If you're coming out that way, then you got to zig over to get down. Right. Right. Well, you get you've got to come this that way. way. Yeah. This yeah, is but out. I, this is in. So is it one way going in? So yeah. let's yeah, it's one way in and one way out. Oh, you're talking about here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. If I yes. go there, you got to kind of just zig it. you got to zigzag. you got to get S it. Exactly. Do you, do you need to make these one way is the question. I mean, they're 20 foot. Right. I mean, I mean that's kind of for all the engineers to yeah. kind of think they about. I mean, I don't, they don't have to be. It, um, typically, it's more common to be one way if it's two way and they're only separated by about 30 feet. There's some there's some yeah. conflict yeah. points. What? Yeah. The, the actual boulevard making each of those legs two way. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Wouldn't. Okay. No, I think I think that'd be unorthodox. I think it becomes very confusing. I think I think we just need to strike this appropriately on this corner <laughs> and make it clear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can look at some standards of how boulevards are typically oriented. And you might have to play with that yeah, corner a little bit. Configuration and signage that'll that'll make that clean and that's all. That's Dave, we'll look at the orientation of it. Don't Dave, Paul, this is Seven just Land Drive. Idea. Mr. Chairman, how would the sidewalks work along that boulevard? Yes. Yeah. Or are people walking in the street? There's a sidewalk <laughs> right here. Okay. We haven't shown one down the other side yet, but uh, on the other park, we actually uh, put a sidewalk right right down the middle of the, the boulevard yeah, that's itself. But, you, but you'd still have crosswalks, right? You'd Correct. Have, you'd have to cross over the street for right. That's right. Typically, these subdivisions have sidewalks on one side of the street yeah, sure. only. Sure. And that's what if you yep. see it. Okay. Here. Great. Thanks. Sure. Okay. I think I'm seeing okay. that this would probably kind of work, but might need a little bit of tweaking just to to get rid of a, a little yeah, bit of a jog. Yeah, these are hand sketches, yep. just trying yep. to get the idea across. But obviously, okay. they need to be engineered, and uh, okay. that's that's our next step once we get your feedback here. Okay, I think, yeah. I think we're ready to move along. And then, lastly. This board kind of handles a, a couple of things that we talked about uh, last time. Um, some in response to some requests from um, the Mesits, our butters, and some that related to the cul-de-sac treatment itself. Uh, we did look at providing a cul-de-sac at the end of uh, at the end of Oak Street, where we were providing a hammerhead before. Okay. Uh, again, we think we can get that to work. It does require a little regrading. Of this area, but uh, which area does it require? This is right, right down at the end of Oak Street. Okay. Here, instead of uh, hammerhead that we were providing, now we're looking at a, a cul-de-sac. So you're a little bit more road work down there. A little bit. Yep. You, is that but a fill, mostly you fill or a where, cut? You can see the limit of where we had the cul-de-sac right here. Yep. We're really not pushing. The, uh, the road itself any further in this direction, but the grading is going to be a little more fill out in this direction. Okay. Uh, so that's just going to require us to um, shuffle the units a little bit and probably use uh, the narrower footprint that we discussed in this area. Uh, and then we actually uh, take one from here and move it down to this location. You, you, take, you take what you lost? Yeah. The, the, one, the, the one from in that location there. And right all here. The to the front. Okay, okay. One, two, three, four. How come I'm only seeing four? Well, th let me get to the next point and then okay. we'll come back to that. The other thing we did here was uh, instead of duplexes facing the abutter here, now we have all simplexes. Okay. Facing in this direction. Uh, so to make up for that, we had to relocate um, relocate the simplexes from here to here, and put the duplexes here. And when we do all that to keep the same unit count and the same uh, ratio of duplexes to simplexes, we do end up 
a little bit imbalanced, which is why we need the uh, additional the unit right there. So it's the same number of units, it's just the spacing. Uh, it's not a direct one-for-one -one swap to change these duplexes out to simplexes along Phipps, Phipps Street. Is Okay, so that last, the one unit that you've added at the end of the line. Yes. That's in a cut area, I believe? Yeah, I believe we are cutting down in that um, in that area. Okay. And, and just one more item on this sheet. Uh, we did talk to the Mezzins about providing uh, a hammerhead at the end of Phipps Street, um, which actually comes out to our property. Mm -hmm. It would be uh, proposed as a, a grass pave system. Um, that would allow for an emergency vehicle or a plow or something to turn around up there uh, at the end of the road. To find grass paved for all of us. The, it's a reinforced turf system that is plowable, it's maintainable, but it's, it's grass, essentially grass grows up through. It's, yeah. This is like the concrete block that's got holes in the middle? Exactly. So basically it's, it's concrete pavers that are about three or four inches thick, and you set them all dry laid in a stone dust setting bed. And you sweep below them in all the joints, which is about four inches deep, and you seed on top of it. So when the grass grows, you'll still see the paver blocks, and you can drive on it. And at the same time, it looks aesthetically more appealing. And you, you went with that because your proximity to a couple of those simplexes, is that the... I think it's that. I think the Mesut's wanted to see something that wasn't quite so heavy and determinous. Are, are you guys uh, more comfortable with this plan at this point? We are. Okay. That's we met, just so you, the board is clear, we also met with uh, Wayne Mezzet, and uh, I think at this point Wayne is very happy with the plans. Okay. okay. I, I like that it's otherwise would have been now a dead end, and now it's being improved with that. Space. Okay. So I, one question that I have on the Oak Street row of simplexes. Yes. Could they be moved more to the south to allow that trail connection not to go within 10 feet of the guys back? Yes, they can. I mean, uh, we, we've not gotten into the fine tuning of um, adjusting for different unit sizes along this run. Uh, but when we do, that is one of the places where we do want to give ourselves some more room is right in this, this corner here. And it looks like the hammerhead might allow you to tackle that, you know, you could shift almost a whole house unit down onto the corner of the, of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, the uh, cul-de-sac, I believe. In, in this direction? With yeah. This if, house? yeah. Well, or, or, I mean, you take the one from the left hand of that string and put it on, on the end of the right. Yeah. It almost looks like it makes it there. <clears throat> John? Mr. Uh, through the chair. One of my concerns, and I might be looking at the intersection, and I'll looking at this plan, and for lack of, since the compass is askew, say plan north, east, west. Mm -hmm. If you assume from Drive A, plan east, Oak Street and Pine Street exits at Pine, you have an awful lot, if you back out on the plan, you've got 130 houses that are exiting on Oak Street a legacy farm road north, which is significantly higher than you have any place else, and it's the same size intersection. I'm a great believer that no matter how you argue, they can come out Pine Street. Nobody's going to go to the right to come around and come to the left to come, you know, 200 feet from the other one. They're going to come out on Oak Street. And since it's a, and you might want to point out the houses I'm talking about in a bigger plan. Well, zoom area. out another, no, yeah, that's the intersection, but pull out on the plan the number of houses, that whole... It's 172 yeah, homes. 172 homes coming out on that one, one point, point, one back. point. And you're, you have it as the same intersection oh, that one. Mm -hmm. as all the rest. I just think it's a lot of traffic to come out and turning at that point and have it as exactly the same intersection... <coughs> as the others, which have probably a third of the traffic. It had 39 back then. I don't know what it is now. 
So I'd ask you to take a just a look at because people nobody's gonna come down make a right on oak, make a left on pine and come back that way unless the traffic's really bad because we haven't done the job there, but it's an awful lot. Well, it's backed up in to, and out. Backed up to Oak Street. Just yep. Mr. Chairman, if yep. I may, just a couple comments to that. Um, first, I think the the guidelines or the design review guidelines give different classifications of streets based on the number of homes that are on them. So maybe we could check the guidelines, the master plan special permit guidelines, and make sure that the design of that intersection and that roadway meets with the classification that the road's supposed to be designed for. I, I believe it does, but we can confirm that okay. intent. Yep. And the second point is that we did, after last meeting, speak with um, Robert Nagy, who's the you know, senior project manager at VHB, who's the, this, who's the traffic engineer on the Legacy Farms master plan, uh, who's been working with um, Mr. McDowell. And he looked at the projections of a peak hour projections of vehicles leaving each of the roadways from our development, the private development, onto Legacy Farms Road North. And he's, um, he's saying here that there wouldn't be more than three vehicles waiting to turn um, onto Legacy Farms North at any time at any of the intersections. And that would be at the maximum peak um, time in the morning. And other than that, the major the overwhelming majority of the day, th there will not be any delays for drivers to turn onto the road, and therefore no queues. So does we he get, if I may ask, yeah. does he have it by, by intersection? He didn't have it by intersection. Okay. He looked at because I'd be interested in seeing how you could argue that Pine Street may have two cars and Oak Street have three cars. I, it just seems like an awful mm -hmm. lot. And again, a lot of the studies take, you can go out this way, but I believe people drive like water flowing downhill. They're going to take the shortest distance and go out that way. I just think it's a lot, a lot of cars. And I think your idea of looking at that intersection and just making sure it can handle it. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I think, I think you guys still have an action item on that, you know, because I want something that our folks at Beta can mm -hmm. review and opine on, on, on just what John's decision is. Um, I mean, it's pretty easy. You got to know how many houses you got there and a couple yeah. cars each. And Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Is there no other way to put a third access from that development onto Legacy Farms? All right. Why don't we... Well, we ask that question after we get the results of this more detailed study on the intersection. Because okay. if there isn't a if there is a problem, then your question is very much in order. If it if it doesn't matter, then okay. I mean, to try to put it in context, what do we we have? And I'm trying to I'm not trying to make the case for them. Yes, sure. Sure. I think the point is that there is um, a, a lesser route to travel out, and they're looking at that, both of those um, aspects at the same time. So it might be a viability to kill oh. two birds with one stone at Trump. Well, I, yes, but you know, we also don't necessarily need any more pavement than we really need. But if we look at it's going to be packed up, I was looking for that. School kid study that. Yeah, that, 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 that you know, yes, yes. So if 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 I look at Legacy South to put it in a context, today we have 240 apartments and and uh, well, actually, between apartments and simplexes, duplexes and single family, we have 420 units that go out two sides of Legacy Farms Road. And I don't know, it's, does anyone wait more than one or two cars at Legacy Farms Road South? Mr. Chairman? Yeah. I probably drive that road two, three times a day, Legacy South. Yeah. And Again, this is not scientific, but my feeling is about two thirds of the traffic goes out East Main Street side rather than the Colton Street side, maybe more. 
Mm -hmm. And the hundreds of times I've driven on there, I don't think I've ever been behind more than one car, never mind two. And I think that, uh, I think Rob has <coughs> made these projections of these tributary roads, even the one with 172 units. I would not be surprised if three is probably a correct number, but let us have him specifically look at that one intersection in those 172 units, and I think we'll get that information for you readily okay. soon. Yep. The one point yep. I want to make related to that is most of the people coming out of Legacy South are going to take a right to Framingham, Boston, whereas most people, so it's an easier to get out a right turn, whereas the, this will be the opposite, taking a left-hand turn across traffic. I've, I'm not so sure that it's that way. There's, I think there's more traffic actually, if I remember the original studies, getting to 495. You want to go left. Or or left. Down. I always go a left out of there. I mean, with the hill cut out, it's a lot safer than it was a year and a half ago. But I'm just going by the traffic yeah. on Spring Street and Fruit Street, which is you know, yep. dead steady to Framingham, Boston. So just, yeah, just a thought. I don't have well, anything to back it up. Yeah, from, from the east side of town, I think you got okay. you got to if you go to the right then you're bogged down in Ashland, Ashland and Framingham yep if you go the yeah this one's a little bit further east than mine you know I'll go through the center of town and go up 85 to get on on 495 sure. from Ash Street but we'll um we'll provide the qualitative um, calculations that, that are needed to I think to, I, Mr. I, Mr. I think you find it easier if you went left out to Rafferty take a right onto Cedar Street Cut down, go down the gas station, take it right up over the hill, over. Yeah. <laughs> down, and you're on the mass pipe. Yeah. Well, I've got your attention. Just a trivial thing about streets. Why are we calling it Oak Street when we already have an Oak Street? These are just <laughs> names. Okay, okay. names that they've put on the plans. Yeah, they're, you know they're going to change. You know they're going to. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Just, yeah. Absolutely. We're going to change all the names on the next. Okay. Thank Come you. up plans. with good names. Like Oak these, these crazy. That's Oak Street extension. Sycamore. Whatever. Some of those street names on the south side. Try getting Easy Street through the. And in public, the planning board has nothing to do with street yeah. names. That's up to the board of selectmen, but I'll tell you, they were. Well, anyway. So, Mr. Chair, not to yeah. belabor the point, but just to be clear. So, what for the next set of plans, we were, we're going to put like letters, you know, A through Z on the next set of plans because we know we need to come up with a, a new set of names and then go to the selectmen and have the selectmen review and approve them and so um, we, th we thought that that could be a step that we do later and just okay. for the plans at the planning board level we, we would just put you know letters okay we could change them later okay I mean before we finalize it they need street names before you go build or anything but right. anyway and and I also assume this plan also gets changed with uh, the, the curvy yes mm -hmm. correct okay so this will look a, a little accumulation of several design ideas will okay. make their way into that final set here. Okay. So where are we? I think that's the last of your shoots. Yeah, no? Last of these shoots. Okay. Do you know what this is? Do you know what this is? That I think was a pump station, but why don't you ask the question? So in the Hallmark Heights subdivision on Maple Street. There's a big open space between a couple of the simplex homes and then it's looks like a stone or gravel pump station. station. It's a pump station. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. What, what, are, we, what are we looking at next? Well, I know you don't um, want to review it uh, tonight, obviously, but yeah. you can hand this out so you at least have it and can okay. review we'll, we'll it. Okay, we'll be happy to take the paper okay. copies, but we want electronic ones so we can pass yep. them around. Yep, absolutely. Can review that exhibit? We, we, can, we can look at both of these because mm -hmm. we got 20 more minutes. Can I make a quick comment? The, uh, what we, the presentation we saw? Thank you. Thank you. It was very responsive and creative. And Appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Thank Thank you. Okay. And uh, Can you take one for the member that's not here. Sure. Okay. Let's 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 go through this one first. 
Mr. Chairman, this is the, this is the latest version. We could you a version earlier that didn't have quite this much land on it. So the land area has gone from about 10.5 acres to 13.5 acres. And what we try to do is cover more of the areas that you thought should have been um, not classified as, as common public space, if you will. So everything in this sort of purple zone is, uh, we'll call it sort of private restricted land. And this is 13.5 of the potential 30 acres of area. So for clarification to the board members, remember we had a concern that there was open space mm -hmm. in these small slivers. Mm -hmm. This retains the open space in the small slivers, but it uses the, the 30 acres that's allowed to be for the private restricted land which I think we're going to need a, a restriction written out for that, which I'm sure Ray will love to review. <laughs> uh, the, and the board members have a, any issue with this land being private restricted land, meaning you know, I, I, I think it, you know, it is truly there should be no expectation that that restricted land that any of us on this side of the table are going to go walk on. I mm -hmm. agree. And I don't have a real problem with it myself, but I just want to make sure that we have a consensus on that before we go too much further. Could you define, um, is there a legal definition to private restricted land? There will, there will be a restricted land covenant that will probably mirror the other ones, only it will probably say it's for the bene exclusive benefit of, uh, of the uh, residents. Mr. Chairman, I think you're correct in that, but I don't think we should look at this as something where some say, gee, get off my private restricted land. I mean, there will be no delineation visually to these parcels than anything else other than the fact that they're some instances very small, so if it's between buildings, that would be perceived visually as private space. But you'll notice there are other areas, for instance, all along this entire length. This is nothing more than that. Granted, this is owned by, by others, but visually this is sort of connected to this space. This is connected to this space here along the road, um, similar places. So. It's not going to look and feel like, gee, that's private. It might be designated that, but the reality is it's going to be part of the overall flow. Who maintains it? The yellow A. Landowner Association. Well, In some instances, the HOA. Why, why would you split along, I'll say, Legacy Farms Road North up in the, I guess, the Northwest Village? You've got a lot of land that is right along the road. Yeah. yeah, those kind of those parcels. Well, I mean, this is actually quite a large piece, and the thought was this area here being close to the homes, we, we very well could leave this as part of this if you'd like to. I mean, in other words, leave it as part of this common area here. Well, we I, didn't here because it's right up against the property line. Sure. This piece, you bring up a valid point. This piece could well, stay. I don't. I don't have a problem with a piece of land. It allows, technically, where you can say no for somebody ten feet off the back deck. I, I don't know. You know, I, I just, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I just, I don't think we had any hiking trails that are going right along that area. We don't. Mm -mm. And you know, maybe, maybe you ought to look at it as, as wherever that wonderful berm is going to be, that defines the border between the two. You know, because the berm will be kind mm -hmm. of a natural feature, I think you were talking about mm -hmm. right in there. And, and, you know, on the house side of the berm, it's this kind of stuff. And on the other side of the berm, it's the other. I don't know. I, yeah. I'm just looking yeah. at, a, at At the end, end of the day, it's the same kind of open space one way or the other. But we could do that. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, and... I see you've got the the tot lot kind of covered that way at this point with 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 the restricted area, which is is that, is that the intersect? There? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And I think, I don't know, I think the board members feel comfortable with this or not? Any further clarification, please? Okay, go ahead. For uh, private restricted land, does that count toward, I think you said this already, but I just want clarification, does that count toward the total acreage that's yes. for open space? Yes. Um, and so we're basically just changing the definition of it from open space to private restricted land. The master plan special permit had that as an option for up to 30 acres. What's the minimum amount of open space that's needed? Well, there's 500 total acres, including 30 of which could be in this category. And if we Davis? Do we, do we have 30 acres without this? We don't know. Because the building has to happen? Well, well first off, we, we've never used this designation before. So this is the first time. Uh, it may very well be a little bit more later. So whether it ends up being, this is 13 and a half, so whether it ends up being 18, 20, 22, we as, don't know. As you go through and develop and things. There's probably do. some on the south side we probably should have classified like this, too, but we didn't. Mavis. Well, I wanted to point out on the south side, at the end of our street, we cannot go get out. We cannot leave the end of our street without crossing privately. We were supposed to have some type of access over to I don't know, another trail. But we have no way of leaving the neighborhood at the end of Curtis Road without either well, walking out to Legacy Farm South on the, you know, between the properties or through a yard. So I just want to bring that up. I, I'm not clear what you mean by that. You're talking about walking or driving? Walking. So you have no access? We have oh. no egress from oh. the end of Curtis Road. Oh, I'll look into that. Yeah. We'll definitely look into that. So th Thank you. through the chair, I, I believe the original point when it was brought up uh, was that... No, oh, wait a second. Let's finish on Mavis's point. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I thought there might, was the possibility of going through the old railroad bed area. Isn't that a... There's, There's a, a house there. there. There's a house there. That was supposed to be the way. We were supposed to be able to get but out there. And There's not a... Oh, are you talking about a new Pulte house? Yes. I don't think not on the on the ra railroad yeah, bed. It's right getting to it though, down in front of Mesut's fence and house in there, back in that corner. I, I'm talking right now from the end of Curtis Road, out to either I don't know if that's cul-de-sac road is in there or Legacy Farm South. So we don't have a, a I think you can get through, but it's not you defined. Have to, you have to walk. We just feel like we're walking. We feel like we're walking on somebody's backyard. Right? Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to walk that with Mavis and figure that out. Okay. Yeah. Good. It's, okay. We're getting a little bit further off of uh, the north side. So, so, Mr. Chair. Yep. Um, your original point before was that who, if, I think the kind of rule of thumb was if you don't feel comfortable walking between people's houses, like on the skinny strips, then it doesn't count as open space. And so I think the spirit of having 30 acres of open space uh, doesn't <coughs> match the private restricted land that we're defining here. I would like this, you know, sure, this land is controlled by the Housing Association and, and all that, but I don't think it should count towards the total open space that we need to hit. And if we're I'm not sure what to do about that. Well, there's actually there was a specific classification for that. Yeah, I, I, according to the master plan special permit, which I think Roy provided it in our last meeting with a nice highlighted section. I mean, this was kind of envisioned as that. I don't, you know, a small strip that I'm not allowed to walk on. I'm comfortable with that, quite frankly. I, you know, I'm, I'm not co comfortable with, if it, if it had been in a different classification, such as the natural state or restored or landscaped or something like that, you know, this this eats up the the portion. But it, I mean, it is a judgment call, though, Frank, one yeah. way or the other. I mean, it is you can you can you could think of it 
I, I could probably make the argument that you just made, too. Yeah. Well, you did. That's why that's right. what I'm I, going about. Well, I, you know, but I didn't remember we had this particular category. So, you know, I, I'm not comfortable with, with our normal open space if you can't walk on it. Right. And, but this is, you, I can't walk on it, but it's part of this. And, you know, I'm allowed to do it. I mean, we envisioned a 30 out of 50 acres almost 10 years ago. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I don't think we're looking to hit the 30 acres, but if we aren't allowed to use this, we won't be able to hit our 500 year. Well, you might get your 30 acres by redefining some of the south side, too, someday at the end. When we do the last balances, it might be better off to redefine some of that. I don't know. Okay. Let me just ask. No, go ahead. Final question, Mr. Chairman. Just, I guess, maybe you're in Frank's point. What's the concern about having a private restricted land, those 13.5 acres that he's identified here, vis a vis just having it open space? Just, just like some of the other categories? Yeah. Uh, because. I think, in general, in town, if you have an open space, people the presumption, well, walk. if you look at the restrictions, people can walk on it. Right. Right. Here, here you can't. You can't. Here, really here you can't. But it's all in people's backyards. and. Right. Yeah, and who would do it? But but the, what he's trying to say, what I think, excuse me, um, what, he's, what I think is, in essence, saying is, Nobody's going to do it in the first place, but if it's restricted, then then you're definitely not you're going to definitely do it. not going to do it. Okay, not any problem. Okay, I'm not comfortable voting on this right now. I need to read into it. Uh, sure, to understand it better. We're not voting on anything tonight. Okay. <laughs> okay, we've got another seven or eight minutes here, and shall we tackle this 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 thing today? Which is, I think, the north area of restoration. Who's, who's, who's is this? Is this, this yours, Roy? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, with the help of Jennifer, I think each version of this we've made, we've improved. And you'll see numerous footnotes down the lower left of your small version. And what we've tried to do, and I will say that this is really a, a sort of a work in process, if you will. I think once we finally do this work, it'll evolve somewhat. But some of the areas are very well defined now. For instance, this parcel shaded in gray is going to be nursery growing stock on this piece here, the Western Nurseries. You'll notice there are two, two fairly large wooded areas. The gas easement going through it here. These will remain wooded areas. There's another wooded area up and through here, which will remain a wooded area. There are clusters of wooded areas as one comes through. And then most of the other areas we have classified as meadow and plant material. And the reason we're saying that is a lot of this area, once uh, some of the plant material is transplanted, removed, whatever the case may be, will be graded and remain meadows. There are some other areas when we come through, which is very attractive. There are clusters of trees that we think would be very nice to leave in a meadow environment. So you're going to see a lot of areas where there are clusters of trees, meadow, a combination of meadow and ground cover, and various types of plant material, and forest wooded areas. So in some ways, some of it will go back to the natural state. Some will become maintained meadows, and some of it will be wooded into a nursery stock. So when you when you go meadow and plant material, let's just say right along Legacy Farms Road. Here. Right up in here. Yeah. Yeah. I see from this overhead satellite view there are some trees or bushes or something left in that area. Well, right here there's some substantial trees. There may be 20 to 25 feet tall. Mm -hmm. So I think those will probably want to stay. I think there are areas, let's take an example. Let's say we have a five acre field. Mm -hmm. Let's say there are 40 shrubs or trees in that field. 
We may very want to take those out to make it a beautiful field. Mm -hmm. I don't think what we want at the end of the day is a patchwork quilt of a piece of field the size of this room and 22 bushes and a piece of field. So the idea is to have some flowing visual appearance of meadow, wooded area, meadow, wooded area, uh, clusters of trees in a meadow, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Now the yellow line we show here is the proposed haul road during construction to keep all those vehicles off of Legacy Farms Road, which we all think is a real benefit. And during construction, uh, that would have to be uh, boarded with erosion control, well defined so people aren't wandering in various directions, in a very controlled environment. And once the use of that is completed, this would be fully regraded and reseeded. I make a comment. I, I drove up there last week, and it was it's it's, it's like as Roy described, and it's uh, the the hall road would make sense to go that way, and um, as they're paving the Legacy Farm North, why do extra damage to it and all exactly. that? Okay. I think that was kind of a lesson learned, frankly, on Legacy Farms Road South. If we could have avoided having all the trucks up and down that road, we're in a much better situation. We're stuck a little bit with your bridge crossing for a lot of it, though. Yeah. But are people comfortable with the concept for the haul road through this area at this point? Yep. I have a question. The haul road, is it made up of existing nursery cart path? Is it... Actually, the haul road right now is actually being used as a haul road by Ludlow Construction for the building of this road right now. So it's actually... It, it was, I guess, a cart path at one time, but it's it's more than a cart path. It was it was really a, I'll call it a road road. It was built by the Mesits for access. going from point A to point B. So it's it's more than a cart path. Okay. But it's a mixture of mud and pavement and correct things that have grown over the years and correct. But you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna restructure that. Uh, It'll be totally restored. Yeah. Okay, and then. You're also showing a uh, access road that kind of skirts the uh, uh, LNG property up there along that side? Yes, I think that that road should stay. It's paved. It's uh, There are actually a number of roads. We're showing some blue areas of the trails, but I think, frankly, I think there can be a lot more trails because when one looks at this, these are natural. For instance, as we all know, you'd be coming up here to a parking area for Wilson Street. This takes you right out to Wilson here. So you'd come up in here, and then, of course, one can either drive or walk through here. There are litany of trails through here. You know, it might be at some point we designate some of those trails for horses and some of those trails for uh, walking, various other uses. So I think there actually could be many more trails than through here. As you, as you talk about... Go ahead, Mr. Yeah, you, go, you go ahead. I was just going to say, as you talk about the trails, is that something two feet, and is it just dirt? Four feet? Did you have a vision? Well, uh, if we if we use some of the existing roads, some of those trails would be 10 feet, 12 feet wide. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because a lot of them right now are actually gravel roads. Yeah. It's They're maintained. properly maintained. But they can be narrowed down, too. They could be narrowed down, but I think what's happening, as you'll notice over the years, something may have been 10 or 12 feet wide, but it, it shrinks. Yeah, it's and it's it's grass so some of those now might be 6 or 8 feet wide. Right. Mm -hmm. So... As the next evolution of this particular plan, I think maybe showing the parking area up in the north area. And I think, I don't know, does the board members think that this access road should be gated or should we allow cars to go through that whole top area? I, I would not. Uh, yeah. You would what? I would not allow cars in front. Right, so you, we, we kind of gate it right I'd in there. Gate right in. Sure. I mean... I think you're asking for trouble. I, th I think we're right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think the hour is is just about there. Uh, we're making progress. However, if I look at our agenda and I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure we get this thing finished before the election and the two new members. Uh, I'm very worried about that. Uh, 
we've got to have a lot more discussions regarding the subject that Selectman gave us on LMG mm -hmm. and mitigation for that. I suspect that's going to take not the normal group in this group, but maybe another couple of different type of consultants that mm -hmm. have some expertise in that area. I just don't see where we get to where we go between now and the election time period because we still have a lot of work to go. I'm not Am I right? There's only two meetings between now and the election. <coughs> I, think that's, yes. I think that's correct. Yeah. Uh, we've got April 25th. What time did we do the DPW? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, so that's going to 8 to, to, to 9 for sure, maybe even a little bit longer. We've got to we've got the the uh, at the master plan there. and Ash Street also. You know, Ash Street is on the ninth, right? Yeah, we have the um, <coughs> special permit for historic strip lots with historic structures for yep. 151 Hayden Row. Yep. On the twenty fifth. So we've already got three things on the ninth. The potential for Eversource to come. We have to talk about that. Yep. And we have um, potential for design review board applicants to come. Yep. Oh, and we'll talk about that one. Uh, I'm just not sure we get there. You know, I, I just don't see a path to, to get us to where we are. And we're, we're losing a lot of members. Roy? Uh, Mr. Chairman, is it possible to set up some independent meetings separate from your regular meetings? Because it seems like every time we come in, we get about 45 minutes because there are other things going on. It would be helpful, I think, if we could get a couple of evenings where we would just this budget. Well, the week of May 22nd is town meeting, so we can't do anything that week because it's going to go. I'm not thinking we we'll do something in April or early May. My concern is you're losing two board members. Mr. Carp, you're leaving, correct? Yeah. And Claire is leaving. Would you consider asking the selectmen to point uh, Claire and Brian for maybe, whether it's a temporary period of time, to finish the review so we don't have to try and incorporate new members? Well, that's a, that's a crapshoot. I mean, it's we're, like we're asking for maybe <laughs> Brian anyway because we've put this strong arm on Brian to, to <laughs> go for another year. If, and if Claire gets elected as selectman, I don't oh. know if she's going to have time or... Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a whole other... I mean, I'm sure Claire would put the time in if we asked her, but that kind of also kind of begs the question. Uh, let's, let's, let's think of... Well... It's an interesting option because... If you have two new members, yeah. where, where are you? you know? the, the problem also I'm, I'm seeing is we're running out of voting members that, you know, in, well, in a couple of these meetings we could easily miss in, in several. Know. Everyone that's missed one is going to be out. Right. You don't have more. Right. We're, 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 we're going to be, I, I just don't think we get there from here, but that's because, but. Right. Roy actually brings up a I don't know if it's how viable it is to go back to the board of selectmen and sure. have Claire and Brian. Yeah. Is there a, a sorry, through, through the chair? Yep. Say, uh, I think I made it only three minutes before the election, um, but say there's, um, that happens, we have two new members and, um, or more, is there a way to have a condensed version of everything that is current oh, yeah. in we, the project? We, we would, we, we would make sure that where we are it would be up to the two new members of the board to make sure that their questions are asked. The presumption is that the rest of us are pretty comfortable with it, and, and as fast as they can be brought up to the speed and, and everything resubmitted, we can go, I think, lightning speed over where we're at. You know, but it it's, would not be fair to the, the other members, and then though they've been coming for the last couple of meetings, uh, 
not to have whatever questions they might have on the various subjects. So we would kind of go through quickly. That would be my, you know, I don't want to necessarily listen to everything we've done <laughs> again, quite frankly, but but I will defer to the, the, to the new members uh, on, on that. Why don't we continue to talk about this thing and continue to the April 25th to present, keep our options open, and then we'll, we'll try to figure out where we're at between that. I'll get with Roy and Mark, and, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll talk a lot about where we got to go schedule-wise. But uh, at, on the 25th, we, our last one is at 8. Right. We continue uh, till 9 o'clock on the 25th. Now, if if we're if we're close to finishing the the DPW facility, we're going to finish it that night. If we that's our goal. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Chair. Yep. <clears throat> do you feel comfortable that the work that uh, Pulte has presented this evening, vis-a-vis -vis changing of roads, cul-de-sacs, etc., uh, that they should bring their plans up to a level? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think. I think you're getting, you, you know, I think we've talked about a lot of the hard decisions mm -hmm. that, and we're feeling much more comfortable with it. I mean, you know. So, I would entertain a motion to continue the public hearing till 9 o'clock on April 21st. 25th. 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 Yeah. So, so moved. Second. Moved second. Seconded. Okay. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone Aye. opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Now I then obtain a motion to continue to April 25th at 9 o'clock. The special master plan special permit for Pulte Homes. The application to amend Legacy Farms Master Plan Special Permit uh, for the age restricted homes till uh, April 25th at 9 o'clock. Second. Seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. I think I, mo I got everything moved that I had to move. Okay, I'm just making sure that I'm not screwing things up. Thank you very much. Yes. We've got, we got some more business to do here, so if you guys are leaving, go slowly. Yes. Thank you. Uh, any more copies on the uh, revised? Uh, it was on the first hearing. Yeah, you didn't show up. Oh, okay. Okay. Can I send it to you? Sure. Yeah. It's like basically. Like no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's consider the minutes for yeah. March 24th. Or March 14th. I'm 14th. The only question I had, and, and I'm trying to remember, on page two we talked about the um, the flow from the detention pond to the wetlands in the north. Oh, as opposed to the south. I guess that was right. Does anyone remember that the, that plan? March 14th. Yeah. Yeah. There, we, we talked about the detention pond, and I was not confused in my own mind as to whether it was north or south at the time. This what you said. Yeah. What? It's north. We can leave it out. Okay. We can leave it out from one side to the other. Connecting the detention pond to the wetlands. Have a good night. Good night. To avoid diminishing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's just cut out the. The direction. <laughs> the the, the direction. Yeah. I, I think they understand what we need, and I think we understand it but anyway. So with that correction, does anyone else have corrections to the minutes? I, I haven't had time to review them. I'm, I'm sorry to get a packet, but I, and, and online I usually 
it's harder to read for me. Um, I'll I'll have to abstain. But, um, okay. Do I see a with motion the to approve? Something up approve later as, something. as corrected. No. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Further discussion. Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? One abstain. One. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Correspondence. Uh, you just had some um, some zoning board notices and decisions. And decisions. Okay. So that's the only thing we had on there. We had some questions of design review candidates. We have two people. And it was. We have uh, Maria McNamara, who's currently on the design review board as an associate. And then we have Amy Ritterbush requesting mm -hmm. to be on the design review board. So. Now, I think everyone knows both of those people. Mm -hmm. I don't think we need to interview them per se. I, it's in my opinion. Maria's already been an associate member. I would elevate her as a full member and then welcome Amy. To as the associate member. I make that motion. Moved and seconded. And I guess we're, we're okay with adding that onto the agenda. Sure. Okay. Is that, um, so moved and seconded to, to make the appointments to the design review board. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay, what uh, there was a couple other ones. Yeah. Something with Eversource. What yeah, so I received a couple calls from a woman, Joanne O'Leary at Eversource, who so she has samples of the panels to be installed at their cell, at their station at South Street and she thought that somebody in the town wanted to view the samples before they were installed. Nobody in town couldn't remember who that is. <laughs> so I didn't know if it was this board, and Ken didn't recall it either, but he thought maybe somebody wanted to see them or have them come yeah. in. Or remember, this is those acoustic panels that are going to be right near South Street. Yeah. And I thought it was either Design Review Board, but they kind of say no. They never went to Design Review Board. Never went board. to Design Review yeah. Board. Should we have Design Review Board look at them? I mean, they're a subcommittee of us. Or do you want to have her come in here? Why not have her come in here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And let's invite at least the chairman of the design review board to come, or whoever they would like to send a representative of design review, other than Claire. Other than Claire. Claire. Okay. I, that that works fine. So um, Ken and I had discussed having her come in at your next meeting, which is April twenty fifth. Um, around like 10 minutes to 8 right before DPW if we don't think that the special permit for Watson Historic Structures is going to take that long. So I'm not sure. time in there, right? I think I think so. Buffer. so sure. That sound good? That sounds good. All right, so I'll schedule that. Um, Do we have one more? I'm trying to think. Um, it's been a stressful. Well, it's just... Um, <laughs> I guess we can wait to schedule interviews for the engineering services until we figure out how that's going to play out. Yep. Is that something we think will happen after the elections or before the elections? I think we were trying to do it before, right. but as we just talked about, time is getting tight, so I'm not sure. You know, I would love to see us finalize the draft of the master plan mm -hmm. while this board is still sitting. You know, we might ha we'll hold the public hearings. After the new members, but we ought to get it out to everyone else. I mean, we're we are this close, I think, to the to the draft, and I think, you know, I'm hoping we can bring that across the line. Uh, you've got several reports and stuff of emails that we will when we talk about. LNG, we will have that on our website. And okay. It's really transparent, but I thought that you members ought to see it as soon as it came in. Yeah. Has there been a lot of feedback? I have not heard very much. I haven't heard Su anything. Surprisingly, yeah. which is Same. good. But, you know, uh, it's going to. You'll get there. We'll realize, <laughs> yeah, they'll realize it eventually. I think. We'll call me. <laughs> so. You're getting a lot? You're getting feedback? Yep. I haven't gotten any. I thought I thought that the article in the Metro West Daily News was favorable. Yep. Okay. We're gonna hop news too. It's. Uh, I'm sure we're gonna have some dueling experts to help us understand the studies a lot. Uh, 
and there are a couple other studies that nobody has seen yet either that you will kind of it, it, go there. Yeah, so that's associated to other stuff. So anyway, um, trying to think of any other liaison reports. Anyone else have anything else? You got a, you got another pancake <laughs> breakfast to invite us to, Frank? No, but thank you for coming. Okay. All right. Hey, how was that? I didn't yes. see you. Yes. I was there. I got nine. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. I, did, I didn't get the invite. It was not a public Sorry. meeting, but quick, quick, quick question. Yeah. You started the meeting with the sidewalk survey. Yes. How, how long is that going to be open for? Any ideas? Until we close it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be determined. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, 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 like people that have never been in my kitchen or something? Yes, <laughs> uh, we will uh, we'll keep it up there for a significant uh, time. Til, till we, till we, till we, um, a good month. Okay. Until, okay. until, we, until we stop getting hits. and It's on the front page of the Independent. Big, great. Big notation there. You know, everyone, so, everyone loves sidewalks. Sidewalk. Everyone yeah. loves sidewalks, and we get a lot of credit, I think, for the, the work we're doing on sidewalks. So. Yes. And... Though I'm not sure there's any, we're in an appetite to buy, borrow too much money right now for for sidewalks or anything. But uh, let's hold a pancake breakfast. I, I, should also, I should also thank people, which I didn't mention last time, was that uh, Green Up Day was also Saturday, and uh, Al Rogers. I don't know if you have anything to say about that, but they were cleaning up around the pool, and uh, they had they found a lot, a lot of bags of garbage, and they processed a lot of garbage out, making America beautiful program, and so uh, good to be here. Yes. Okay. Look for a motion to adjourn and so move. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion, seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Anyone that wants to stay, you're kicked out of the room. <laughs> you said tomorrow night, but you wrote that Wednesday. Do you want to do it tomorrow night or is Wednesday? Tuesday, Tuesday works. Hey, Let's get to the last three, seven, four.